welcome. So here it comes. The big problem, all right? Uh, what it's asking us to do is it's asking us to solve for P. And this one's getting pretty big. We're dealing with some pretty big numbers. But the main important thing is we just need to make sure we can understand, follow the exact same path we use for solving other quadratics. The main important thing when I'm going to be solving all right, is I need to make sure I isolate my variables. Well, here I have a P squared and a P. So I just can't get the P's by itself. What I'm going to have to use, I'm going to have to use some factoring techniques. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to factor this. And also, um, by using that factor in solving, I know I'm going to have to use the zero product property. So what that means is I'm going to have to have this equal to zero. So the first thing we're going to want to do is add a one to both sides. Now I have 98 P squared minus 200, sorry, 231 P minus 392 equals zero. Now this is important because now what I can do is I can factor this. Now before we even start factoring, um, I don't even want to try multiplying these numbers and figuring out you know, what um, multiplies to give me those two numbers. That's just getting way too much. What I can do is see what do they have in common. And so I took a look at this and I, you know, I used it and I said, well, all, right, all of these three terms all have in common a 7. So now the next thing you're going to do is factor out a 7 because that is just uh, redundant um, numbers in there. So when I factor out a 7, I'm left with a 14p squared minus 33p minus 56 equals 0. Now still, I have a number that's in front of my, uh, in the quadratic form, the a. Um, I still have a number that's in front of there. So what I'm going to do is it's still going to be kind of difficult for me to figure out as far as, you know, I want to write this as two binomials. But it's still getting a little bit difficult. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a little tool that's going to help me factor it. And that tool that we like to write um, it's just going to be this little x here. And what we do with this x is remember in the form of a x squared plus bx plus c. That's what I was talking about. Your a is 14, your b is negative 33, and your c is negative 56. Well, what I can do to help me factor is I can multiply a times c and b down below. So a times c, um, when I multiply them, is going to give me 700 and 84. That's 14 times negative 56. Actually, that's sorry, that's um, a negative 784. Then I take my b, which is going to be a negative 33. Now, what I want to do with these two numbers is I want to determine what two numbers are going to multiply to give me negative 784, but add up to give me a negative 33. So again, you need to look at the multiples of negative 784 and say what two numbers multiply to give you there, but more especially, what of those multiples, which ones are going to add up to give you negative 33? Well, when you try to go through the multiples, what you end up with is a positive 16 and a negative 49. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use these to help us continue factoring this problem. So now the next step we're going to do is I'm going to rewrite my problem up here, but instead of using negative 33, I'm going to use 16 and negative 45, because remember, 16 and negative 45 add up to give me negative 33. So I don't really need the 7 anymore. That's just kind of getting thrown out. We, it's just added uh, material. So I'm going to get rid of that 7. 14p squared. I'm going to write plus 16p minus 33p minus 56 equals 0. Again, remember, I'm just rewriting this as my negative 33p. But and again, if you want to keep the 7 there, you can use it out there. Check it. But you'll see that what's going to happen is that 7 is going to eventually divide out and it's not going to affect the problem at all. So now the next thing I want to do is I again look at this and there's not a number that they all share in common. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a factoring technique which we call factor by grouping. Me, I'm going to factor the first two terms and the last two terms. So I take a look at these first two terms and I say what is it they share? What is it they have in common? Well, in these two terms I can factor out a 2p. When I factor out a 2p, I'm left with 7p plus 8. Out of these two terms, again, what I look at is I say, um, I'm sorry, that's not 33. That was supposed to be 49. Sorry, I was looking up there. Negative 49. There you go. Because 16p minus 49p gives me a negative 33p. Sorry, I was getting a little too ahead of myself. So now when I look at this, I say, what do negative 49 and a negative 56, those share in common? Well, I can pull out a negative 7. And when I pull out a negative 7, what I'm left with is a 7p 
plus 8 equals 0. Now, some of you might ask, why did you pull out a negative 7? Why couldn't it have been positive? Well, the reason why I wanted to make sure it was negative is because I want these two terms to be the same. The reason why I want them to be the same is because now, since they're redundant, I can factor them out. So when I factor out a 7p plus 8, I'm now left with a 2p minus 7 equals 0. So the whole purpose of doing all of this stuff, right, getting it to equal 0, is so we can use what we call the zero product property. And what the zero product property states is if I have a times b equals 0, then a equals 0 or b equals 0. It has to be that true. Think about any two numbers that multiply and give you 0. One of them is going to have to equal 0. So I can apply that here with this term times this term, these binomials multiplied by each other, equals 0, meaning I can set both of them equal to 0. So now what I'm going to do is now I have two-step equations, where now I have only one variable, which I can use my inverse operations to solve. So I do that. I subtract an 8 on both sides, add a 7 on both sides. Out of 7, then I'm left with 7p equals negative 8, 2p equals positive 7, divide by 7, divide by 2, and here I get p equals negative 8 sevenths, and here I get p equals a positive 7 halves. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is your solution to this lovely polynomial. Thanks.